Hello everyone and welcome to Fables of Fendrea Arcanum. My name is Jose Polino or at DM Jose P on socials and I will be your director for today. I am joined of course by my lovely cast and crew. So let's begin it off with Ryan. Hi, Ryan McManus. I'll be playing Rowan Farrell, Half-Light of Salune, seeking to bring a sense of calm and comfort to those lost in the dark. You can find me on my personals at rye.mcmanus or running the cast party socials at cast party D &D. Awesome, Andy. Hello, beautiful nerds. I'll be playing Five, one of the seven, Shepherd commissioned for recovery by the Haven Eye. And you can find me at Mr. Dandy DM on TikTok and on all the other socials. Annie. Hi, I'm Annie. I I think that I missed my Halloween like Gaslight Gatekeep Ghoul Boss in a spooky voice, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Gaslight Gatekeep Ghoul Boss. <laughs> and you can find me as Cantrip, C A N N E, on TikTok and Twitter. This is actually coming out on Halloween. Is it? Ooh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, awesome. And finally, we have Sin. Salutations. I'll be playing Zue, collector of chronicles, aspiring to herald the histories of Fendrea. And you can find me on all my socials as sensationally.me, C I N, instead of S E N. So, the last time that we gathered to play this deep and dark adventure, you guys journeyed into the forest eastward. You were following the guidance of the Haven Eye that instructed Five as to where possibly he could find his brother, Seven. Once you guys started heading that way, Rid also very inclined to find out where this other part of her, I guess, if you may, is located. So there was a deep interest there. There was a visitation from Selune to Rowan and then an attempted conversation by Zue to Ilionas, which turned more into an observational piece rather than a actual exchange back and forth. But with that said, you guys journey through what essentially look like the forest of Arborea that then turn into like marshlands. But it, the actual change of it seemed very abrupt. As yes, you guys were walking for hours, but within that journey, you sort of encountered in a way what remains of some unfortunate test subjects of the creatures that reside within this area of Arborea. Five had a moment of bestowing upon a haunted creature a profound sense of freedom. As Five knows very well what it is to care for the things that thrive in this world, seeing such a creature in this state push Five to allow her another chance to see with her own eyes at the world before her, pleading, but eventually becoming futile as who's to say how long this tiefling woman creature has been this weird creation. But with that, you guys stumbled upon the marsh lines and discovered that the actual marsh itself seemed to be a veil, a disguise, to actually hide what was truly within this area of the forest, and that is this massive gnarled tree decaying and rotting with its branches spread throughout housing what looked like cages and bodies dangling from the ankles, some from the hands, and very various ways of pure torture. Inside of the cages, there were these like black smokes that just resemble that of what you've seen from Rid, but looked a little bit more violent, a little bit more excitable. And there at the very center where the tree sort of like branches out with its branches, there is a shack. To its side, pieces of wood that make up its actual structure are completely broken and shattered and splintered, but from within, a faint firelight that calls to you all. So with that, you guys pass through this veil to see the tree before you. What do you guys want to do? What happened to you? Five stands just sort of stunned by everything that I'm seeing, just this rampant decay and death all around me. You see, Five, before you, the tree itself looked like it's definitely a part of the entire atmosphere around this area. The sort of, like, additions to it, the shack, the cages, the bodies, have all given the tree leeway to sort of 
let go of whatever fruit it would hold. Because of how deeply connected you are to nature and Segajon, in that moment you know that this is a way in which nature just allows itself to just stop. The shack just perfectly placed at the center of the trunk where all of the branches splint is where you can kind of notice that that's a horribly placed heart on top of an inanimate object, if you will. I want to look at specifically at the cages that have the smoke. Do I recognize any resemblance to the smoke that was pulled out of Rid? I'll say because you've been very perceptive of Rid with a lot of the things that she's kind of been doing at nighttime and the conversation she's been having. Sure. Go ahead and just give me a general perception check. It's a nine. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's one, two, three, four. And this tree massive, its branch is sort of coming out to such an extent where there are some a, a little bit up high that look empty. And then there are some where when you focus on them, you think that they're empty for a brief second. And from within, almost like a whirlwind of smoke creates inside of it and then just shatter outward, but doesn't escape the actual metal cages that it's contained within. There is something keeping them at bay, but they seem very, very wild. Am I allowed to try? Are my dancing lights still active? Yeah, I mean, it's a cantrip, so it's up to you. Rick can do her thing first. I just wanted to move them towards the shadows. So then I'll say that, Rid, you notice, you take point of five looking and inspecting the cages. As you look at them, you don't see smoke. You see other hags clutching the inside of these cages and looking in your direction, but they are completely jet black with these piercing eyes that are of red, purple, green pupils. You can make them out as they shine like beacons in your direction. But you see some of them just contorting their entire body exorcist style against the cages. And what they're doing is that they're shouting. Yeah, yeah, and they're just shouting like wild animals in your direction or in your group's direction. When you see them screaming, not so much that it takes you out of a comfort zone five, but I'll say that that's when you would notice the smoke sort of branching out. Am I still invisible? You're still invisible. Zue, your dancing lights are still up. And then Rowan, if you had whatever spell that was, was that C invisibility or was that another Rowan spell? Uh, it was C invisibility. Cool. What's the duration on that one? Uh, one hour. You're about like 40 minutes. Zue, you take your dancing lights and you want to bring them to a cage. Yeah, and see if it like highlights anything. When you bring up the lights up to the cage, it's just like the amalgamation of pure darkness shying away from the light. You see the smoke clutching to one side of the cage as you bring the lights closer. And Rid, you see a hag that is just pushing back against the cage as the light comes up and you see the slight bit of burning but there is no scream of pain. It is a cackle of maniacal laughter. <laughs> They're clutching back, but you can tell that it's hurting them. Zue, what are you doing? I'm just trying to see what it is. I think it's hurting them. Oh, oh uh, and Zue like dispels the, the dancing lights. Sorry. Hurting what? The balls of smoke? It's just... Balls of smoke? It's hurting the hags. The hag that's that's cackling, that that is what it's hurting. You you're seeing smoke. Reed, do you see something different? Hags. We hear and see none of that. They're just smoke balls. It's hags. It's a lot of different weird black hags with red eyes and green eyes and purple eyes, and they seem maniacal. They don't seem entirely all there. That might be what you're seeing. But upon the looks of it, the others, including myself, is just puffs of smoke that are somehow confined to these simple cages when they could just blow away in the wind. Well, then you're lucky I'm here, aren't you? I suppose so, because if something put them in cages and only you can see it. I don't like that thought. Do you, um, do you see Olga anywhere? Reed kind of shakes her head a little bit. If she's there, it's impossible to tell. Some of them look a little like her, but I don't know. Could you maybe talk to them? 
Last time I talked to Hags, it didn't turn out well for everyone involved. Rowan points through the window in the shack to the faint flickering light. Well, someone's in there. I'll say what you can notice is actually where there would be a door, it's just missing. Am I getting a sense still of where Seven's location might be? Am I get, Are we getting close? It's right ahead. Five looks at the rest of his friends and just says, I think it goes without saying that we should proceed with caution and not touch anything in the cages. Uh, just a heads up, they are, uh, they're looking at us and yelling at us, so I don't know if stealth is going to be possible, but I do love to try. Can they see you? Can they see me? Yeah. Even invisible? Oh, even invisible. And they laugh and they cackle and their heads crack as they hold on to the cages further and harder. You watch as the tension in their forearms build as they're holding on tighter and tighter. Yeah, they can see me, which I don't like. Does it have anything to do with you being invisible? I think it's because I was made by a hag, Rowan. Wait, so you were made by one? The, uh, we'll, we can talk about it later. Five, can you sense your brother? Without saying a word, Five just takes his finger and just points in the direction that he's sensing Seven. Well, someone's inside. Whether that's Seven, Olga, a hag, whatever. There's no point in going in stealth, so do we just rush the place or what? Well, yeah, and Rid dismisses her invisibility. That's the point of us, isn't it? Even when things are scary and dark, you go in and you, you be a little hero, right? You shine in dark times. Spoken like a true heroine. Exactly. As you finish saying that, you feel inside you, your heart take an extra beat. And it's almost like you feel yourself stop talking and you don't feel adrenaline, you don't feel anything, but your hand just naturally gravitates to your rapier. Almost completely out of your control, you find comfort in the way that your body begins to move. And as your hand makes contact with the handle, instant familiar feeling, warm, comfortable, renewed, are instilled upon you and it it honestly feels like your mind is going to break it feels in that moment once you allow yourself to find that comfort like a long dark gnarled hand creeping through the light you find your vision almost begin to be slightly obscured as it just feels like something is reaching out not wanting you to experience that. But when you hold the actual handle, clear. You can see. You're okay. You know where you stand. In Red's hand, the rapier turns into a dagger. Her rapier, as she grabs it, all of a sudden, this light beams for a fragment of a second and the rapier that was there turns into a much more delicate dagger fine points sharp edges it's like the handle of the rapier itself just took out all of the filling and left the center of it so it's still the same the same feel and hold turns over the dagger in her hand and it's a bunch of emotions that flit across her face almost too quickly to see it's like guilt sadness happiness remembering and then back to her carefully crafted stoicism. Anyway, uh, like I said, f forward. Well, that sure was something. Did, did that just change? You begin to walk. Straight ahead, the shack ever so faintly, you can hear the shrieking of the wood. And every now and then, as you get closer, you can't help but step on dead twigs and branches all over the floor leaves that are so dried the minute you your foot presses up on top of them the sound of the leaves is not even satisfying 
because then it, tr it feels moldy and it feels wet. But you keep trekking ahead and you still ever so faintly hear the sounds of the shack. All of it, it just feels tense and quiet. But you, as you walk, the rest of you don't hear it. But Rid, all you hear as you take a step closer and closer to the shack is laughter. Pure, unrelenting laughter. Met with the sounds of screams coming from all all around you you all notice the fog shapes they are all behaving more and more sort of wildly if you will the way in which their behavior now turns is excited but eventually you get up to the front of the trunk and there before you you don't see any way of getting up is there anything you want to do Rid's gonna experimentally go look down at the dagger in her hand and go, uh, I'm a, I'm a hero. I doing good, doing good stuff. And like on like that, like muttering little things until she lands on to shine in dark times. You watch as the dagger itself reverts back to a rapier. Okay, cool. Rowan from the back, watching Rid play with her new sword dagger. All right, are we going to get a move on or into the spooky shack? You essentially see just a trunk with no way of getting up there. Rid, you just stare at it and you find out, I mean, the shack right now stands a good 15 feet off the ground. I suppose Rid will turn around and look at, I guess Rowan probably looks the strongest. Can I get a, a boost or, or how about magic people? You got magic things? How are, we, how are we getting up there? Because I am not a tree climber. Do you need a, a throw or a boost? I don't, what, whatever you got, man. Uh, Rowan gets down, does the finger clasp, ready for a foot, and listen, if you want to jump, just give me the go-ahead or you can climb up on the shoulder. Take your pick. Rid will provide the foot and go and jump, I guess. He lifts the second the foot touches and she pro projects upward. I stand and the hands follow. Rid, you, you put your foot on Rowan's hands and he begins to give you that help. And as you sort of come up, you naturally sort of like put your hands on the tree trunk. And you put your hands to like find, you know, like balance. And from the tree trunk, almost backwards, the actual trunk itself interlocks fingers with you. No! Oh, ew! <laughs> and from below you, Rowan... As you let go of Rid's foot, from the tree, the skeleton hand, they hold her feet up. Rid, is this good or bad? Are these like bone stairs or what? Rid, while holding hands with the tree, I don't know, I, is this first base? <laughs> <laughs> Try climbing again. I don't know if that- Rid tries to climb. Rid tries to like, you know, do the thing when you're putting your hand up higher to see if she can do it. You take your hand off and the trunk itself coils back and then a hand presents itself protruding out from the tree. But honestly, like that of a knight presenting their hand to you, the skeleton hand breaks and all of its fingers find their interlocking spaces and they present their hand to you as you hold on to that hand and now the skeleton hand below you pushes your foot up and you find yourself weirdly beginning to climb this tree. It's it's okay. It, it's a nice skeleton tree, to, to me at least. You try, someone else try. Oh, Rowan turns around. Guess I'll climb the fucking bone tree. And reaches a hand <laughs> up and <laughs> hopes that a hand presents itself. Put your hand on the tree trunk, Rowan. Just a cold tree. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> and you're watching Rid begin to ascend the climb, but you're just touching a tree. Should maybe five try? Five's like in tune with trees. Five looks at the tree, looks at Rid, sees the bones, looks down at Zue, and shakes his head. <laughs> All right. Rid, just get up there. If you need help, scream. Yes, your majesty. Thank you. 
Maybe this tree has better manners than you, Ryan. Scowl. (laughs) (laughs) Rid ascends like the grossest queen. As you are starting to get up there, Rid, you don't hear anything. You just hear the faint sound of a fire crackling from inside of the shack. But now that you're here, you can see that the shacks ever so slightly just shifts and creaks. And it's a very small little shack where now that you're almost at the base of it and you can see inside, it is just an absolute disarray. There is from the entrance what looks like a makeshift bookshelf that is not standing anymore with what look like books that have been charred and burnt. There are papers littering the floor. And the wallpaper that is inside that makes up whatever design was here is all peeled back and completely unrecognizable pattern. Can I check for traps? Sure. Five is just staring at Rid ascending the tree. Rowan has hands on his hips, angry dad face. Well, Zue's probably taking notes while the two of you stand there. Go ahead and roll a investigation check. Fifteen. You look around, immediately from where you are, you don't see any traps. What it gives you the vibe of is that this is an abandoned shack, is what it really just kind of gives you the feel of it. This is already in such a disarray where that immediately makes you think, I probably should check for traps because they maybe want it to look like this. But upon actually really staring at it, it just feels like nobody has been here for a couple of days, perhaps. In that case, I'm going to... Go look for clues, Scooby-Doo style. You come out and you now stand at the landing, the very front of the shack. And inside, since you just see the size of it alone, you don't think much of it. You just think it's pretty small and then you enter. And once you enter on the one side of the wall, where that wallpaper was curling, you now see it throughout the entire shack. But you look... And there, scattered amongst the wall, you see papers and what looks like, honestly, like blood splattered all across the walls. You see clothing just dirty and it has accumulated all kind of dust on top that has been just laying on the floor. And there on the very corner to the right, this opening, something bursts through that side of the shack that leads behind the tree. But I'll say with this, go ahead and give me a perception to look around and see more details or investigation to really start looking at what you're looking at. And then, Zue, you said that you were writing stuff down in your book? Yes. Still cold outside. And as you're writing, Zue, you feel almost like the page bulge outward. And you keep writing. You sort of like don't pay too much mind to it. And all of a sudden, from the page, pushing outward, comprised of the page itself. Zue. Zue. Elinas's face, comprised of the page, pushing outward. You see the fabrics of the page pushing. Lifeless eyes, almost like a drawing, a perfectly rendered 3D drawing of Elinas's face, just kind of like looking. Does anyone else see this or just me? Do I see this? I'm standing right next to her. Yeah. Yeah, you do. But you can't hear it, Five. I... Zue. Make a face and try to take, like, a breath to look normal. And I try to telepathically communicate with this paper face. Almost like radio static is what it feels like. Like, Ilinas is trying to, like connect through to you and he's just finding this moment in time. Ilianos? Zue. Zue! And just the face now freezes and then, Zue, don't have much time. Are you alright? Or haven't you returned? The mission's a little more complicated than I thought. In what way, Zue? Are you safe? I don't know, but there's a lot of hags. And, and there's a lot of shadow creatures that apparently can kill us. You keep saying this, and, and it's one of those things where you try to find comfort in Ilianas' visage. I, I, I do have a question, though. Sue, hurry. You must leave. 
You must try to come back. Wherever you are, Zue, please. How did you guys get back before? Ilinas has never been to Arborea, not that you know of. Ilinas was instructed to be a part of this capturing of this fugitive. So you sort of say to yourself, that that's why did I ask that? But you hear back. It was much easier back then, much less complicated. Zue, believe me, whatever you do, and the page foils back before it can finish, flat on the journal. Zue, what was that? Um, Zue closes her eyes for a second to think. I think that was Ilianos trying to communicate. I'm now a lot more concerned about Rid because he just sounded very urgent and was telling us to get back soon. And he kept saying there wasn't a lot of time. Have you been able to contact him through the book before? No, uh, this is the first time and it was a little bit weird and kind of scary. I thought he was going to come right out through the page. I'm kind of glad it wasn't a physical body. That's what it looked like. That was startling. Zue, I'll say that as you're looking at the book, where that was, you have your writing, your sketches, everything that you yourself have put into the page from behind your words coming out like ink revealing itself. You see what looks like words beginning to be formed. And you see written on the journal behind your words. It keeps me up at night. These visions I'm having. Plagued with eternal damnation. I keep seeing these visions and no one believes me. I feel like I'm going crazy. And crazy, the word crazy sort of trails off like in a hurried state where you like left your pen on the journal for too long. And then you look back at five and the words are gone. Yeah, no, that was a first. I've never had Ilianos talk to me through the book. You see like Zoe's face is like very growing concern and her eyebrows are kind of knitted up and there's like a very big think line between the eyebrows. Zoe is like genuinely shocked about this but you can see something else might have happened or something that she's kind of leaving out or omitting five is going to save that for later i have an investigation check of 28 you're looking around and you don't even know where to begin all the different pages the spattering of blood there are things that are covered that don't even make sense there are some things that are in here that look like recipes. At first, when you're looking at it, it just seems like very standard, maybe array of like commonly used books. Things about like cartography, things about food, things about general welfare, like all of these kinds of things. But then as you're looking, you peel back a page and you see that there's another page sort of like pinned to a board. But now when you look at it, the pins are not pins, they're nails human nails that are keeping these papers tacked all over the walls. A window right in front of you, adorned with papers all around it, cracked as the actual spacing of the window couldn't hold its frame anymore. But you pull out this paper and underneath you see all kinds of different fingerprints that you smushed on the paper and dragged them to make words, notes. You don't necessarily know what this means, but you gather that this is a form, perhaps, on how these hags choose to communicate or write down information, expressive, rather than literally written. In there, in the writing, you see what looks like, perhaps like a letter. And you peel back a paper, you take one up from the wall, you even remove it, and on just one of the papers written in the black blotch with blood splattered on it, you see the word Adrian. Give me another investigation check. Oh, that's a nat 20. That's a nat 20. Oh, shit. For a total of? 29. With the natural 20 bonus in there. You look, you see Adrian. 
in the shack, now that you look up above, there are branches that are sort of like protruding inward that are just sort of like been keeping the roof aloft. And they're hanging from one of the branches what looks like a piece of metal resembling that of five. And you keep looking and you keep looking and they're hanging on another branch what looks like a cloak resembling that of the Arcanum. And they're holding it in weight covered in spider webs and dust. The symbol of the Arcanum adorned on this cape. And you keep looking and now essentially in the time that you're up here, I'll say that you gather papers that contain the words Adrian, Chosen, Creature, Potential, Reward, Proud, all of these words where you're, you can make something with this. As it is essentially the word comprised of the emotional sort of like rendering that was bestowed upon the page. And there, as you look to your left, there on the floor, you see coiled up what looks like a snake, almost like a python. But when you look at it, coming out from the mouth is the tied up end of a rope. That's a real, a real snake or like it's a statue or? It looks like this was once a snake. And in a very, very graphic way, they decided to make it, make use of it in this way, as a rope of sorts. As the body itself is decaying all around, but you can still notice the scales. And you just notice one side of the face of the snake or the head of the snake is just skeleton, while the other part still looks kind of fleshy. And then just the sharp, very menacing teeth. Open, wide, jaw cracked open to reveal the end nod of what looks like a rope. And you sort of follow the coil and you see that the other end of the rope comes out from the other end of its body, and it's tied to the trunk of the tree. And there's a hole in the wall, right? And there's a hole in the wall to your right as you're looking at it. Just kind of like a medium-sized hole where all the wood is essentially projected outward, so you know that something must have burst through that way. Rid will message Zue. Seven's armor in the branches in here. Big hole in the wall, something broke out. Are you coming up or am I coming down? Let me ask everyone. Five. Rowan. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to share something, but I need you to be a little bit calm when you hear the news. So Rid said that there's a hole and it looks like something broke out, but she also found armor from Seven up there. And she wants to know if she's coming down or if we're going up. Five's shoulders raise and bristle as like the branches that make him up to sort of like become thorny. Five sort of gains his composure again and sort of brings himself back together. Do you... Do you want uh, a hand getting up there, Zue? I will try. I, I also don't know if... The tree hands will come out and help me. Five offers Zue his hand, and then he's going to say, I'm going to do this gently. Hang on. And he's going to lift her onto his back, and he's going to start to climb the bone tree. Five, as you, as you begin to climb, you are able to, with just your entire genetic makeup, if you will, you have abilities to you that just come naturally where like you're able to where a humanoid might not be able to like dig their fingers into a tree trunk in order to hoist themselves and find enough you know momentum to project themselves forward you're able to like find the nooks and crannies in a tree shove your fingers deep within and are able to pull out and as that's happening from inside the shack rid i guess you guys notice like a ploof of like black smoke as you begin to climb up Rid is just a mage hand sort of like presents itself very joyously. Five, as you're coming up, all of a sudden this rope <laughs> falls in the body of a snake basically drops down. And Rowan, you're standing right at there as you're seeing Rid above in the shack, five climbing, and you just see what looks like a snake with a ball gag rope at the end of it. And the entire body of the snake, the actual skin just begins to slowly come down as gravity begins to expose 
the rope inside. Red sticks her head out. What a wonderful gift, Red. Thank you. What? Now you can come up. And the, the rope itself, Rowan, is this, like, darkish ichor of what looks like dried up blood. Oh. It's a cool rope. And Red, you just are still met with the laughter. And the laughter is more like it erupts now as you let go of the rope. And you hear, <laughs> hang tight. <laughs> All over this mocking laughter. Now that the rope is down, Rid's going to direct her mage hand to try to get Seven's armor out of the branch. And she's going to try to do this stealthily if possible. Just go ahead and make a sleight of hand check for me. And I'll say that you guys begin to climb. You're essentially about to get there in this moment. And then Rowan, are you climbing? Rowan looks at the bloody snake rope and reaches a hand up and decides, fuck that, and is using his last <laughs> slot of Steps of Night, and he's just going to hover up to the fucking hut. Because you didn't want to touch my gift? Wow. Manners, dude. <laughs> Manners. <laughs> also, you guys, I just rolled a 19 and then a 20 and then an 18 in succession. Sheesh. Wow. The rope falls, and then Rowan, you just, fuck that. And you just begin to glide upwards. Just hover on up. Rid just sees me like coming up like I'm riding an elevator. And <laughs> yeah. then I just hover in. Just <laughs> arms crossed. Just. <laughs> you really had to do that. I suppose Rid is getting the armor down with the 27 as this is happening. And, and she's just like, I'm getting that rope after. It's a cool rope. I'm sorry. I don't like it. Rowan, you begin to ask that as Five is beginning to pull himself essentially to the very top landing of the shack, and you both sort of like meet up, just as Rid is pulling what looks like this armor, and you take your mage hand, Rid, and you sort of hold onto it, and you're able to pull it, but even as you pull it, the what kind of feels or looks like sap is just holding on to the piece of armor, which at this point, you would think that it's possibly some type of protective maybe shin guard of some form even as it comes down to you it's still holding on with some slight tendrils of sap connecting it back to that branch rid with her glowing blue hand will offer the piece of seven's armor to five mind the sap he looks it over and it's very difficult to tell five's expression as normally they don't they don't have general facial expressions but it's sort of this long protracted silence and five is blinking, but really intently and with like a lot of labor. You can see there's moments of recall as he's looking over, he's recalling just memories of seven and six and the three of them together. Remembering when Rosie first told him that seven had left and just sort of the feelings of betrayal. Then the thought just springs into his mind that he needs to find his brother. He looks to Rid, and he says, Thank you for this. Something to know. You'll probably like Seven. He's really, really good at hiding. Very much like you. Keep an eye out. That's his gift. Being hard to find. And there's like almost a mirthless little chuckle at the end of what Five says as he's sort of just remembering. A similar mirthless chuckle from Rid as she remembers what Five used his locate creature for. Better hope your spell's still up then. You get up here, you hold on to the piece of armor, feeling a connection, and you feel you weren't drawn to this, this piece. There's something ahead, something more east and your spell ends. But you're close. Very close. The hags are laughing, by the way. They think we're so funny. What broke out of this, uh, of this hut? Did you find anything about what could have made this hole? Could it have been seven? Does that look like a seven hole? Did I notice any details about that, Jose? Just the fact that it's something that went from inside out medium size well I don't know who broke out but this is a hag's hut I don't think this was Seven's hut if that helps did you find anything else of note 
that we should be aware of. Nothing that we need to worry about right now, I think. We gotta find Seven first. Zue, you're looking in general, and I'll say that just how you are, very detail-oriented, taking down notes, trying to paint a picture with your writing. Give me a perception check. Dirty 20. As Rid is talking from behind her, almost like wedged into the bookshelf, there are two human hands, just skeleton exposed, sitting there like a decorative piece. Zue promptly closes her book and with pure curiosity, instead of thinking, goes up to touch them. So, Zue, you walk up. How do you grab these hands? With my bare hands. I just go immediately to touch them. Cold, wet feeling skin that as you hold it, you have to put some pressure and your fingers feels like they're like pushing through the skin and you manage to hold on to them slightly. As you touch them, the hands just fall open. But you notice what catches your attention is the fact that there is like flesh still here. Yes, it's rotted and yes, there's muscle tissue, but there is still something here. With one hand on the arms, Sue looks back. Did you guys see this? So wait, why do you have to touch everything? The most vile of things you just run towards. Oh, now I see why you like Reed. I never said that. <laughs> Can I slap him with the mage hand? Can I cast bitch slap? <laughs> Can I help with my own? I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> so as you can't attack with mage hand, you bring up mage hand. Rowan, you just see this bluish spectral hand come up as it's going to slap you and you brace for impact. But then you remember, wait, that can't hurt me. And the hand passes through, but just as clearly as you can see from the shimmering behind the hand, Zue raise her hand <laughs> and come by and slap you. <laughs> and the spectral hand goes through, <laughs> but then the, her actual hand makes contact with your cheek and it slaps you. Take like a, what's your strength mod, uh, Zue? You know, can you do negative damage? <laughs> You take no damage, it just stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Rowan, I never said that, but also, science is about all of your senses, so if I don't touch it, I don't know. And so he's, like, very flustered. You know what? I deserve that. I apologize. I'm sorry. I saw it. I took it. I just had to. Did you find anything from your scientific touchings? Not that I could think of but we could keep touching it. You can keep touching it. Aren't you the one who can do all the healy stuff? How am I going to heal a severed arm? No, I'm just saying logically, if you know how to heal, you probably know more about the body than I do. While this was happening, Rid just went over and picked up both the hands and is holding them in hers. Isn't it weird they still have skin on them? Yeah. And wouldn't it have rotted off by now? Do you think these are like hag hands? Can I do a medicine check to see how long it was since they were severed from the host body? Sure. Brid makes the hands high-five themselves. That is a 16 plus my medicine. That is a dirty 20. It's been, it's been years. Oh. It's been years? The way in which the skin folds on the exposed section where you would deem it, it, it was cut or severed in some way. That sort of gives it the feeling where, okay, this was clearly severed at some point, but the way in which the skin coils back, it's like, yeah, this should have taken within a months, if you will, within weeks. But it's, it's almost like slowly deteriorating. And from that, you gather that this hand, how cold it is, how, how it feels, it's been some time. But now that you hold it five, it's a very like, for lack of better words, a mature looking hand. Not of some common stable boy, not some person who dwelled with the arcane. These are the hands of somebody who, very muscular at one point in their life, very rich. Make an intelligence check for me. Uh, that's a 17. Maybe not so much muscular, maybe perhaps a little bit more just full, arms strong with years. 
you know, now that you sort of look at them and you say, you're like, who, who, who have I met? Who have I seen? Oh, I have not seen something in the flesh, but in stone, these look like Adrian's hands. You remember the hand clutching up and you look at it and you're like, this, this looks like it. I mean, there's no way to be sure, but, but it looks just like it. You could swear it does. Rid, uh, you were you were in here inside this shack. These hands they bear a remarkable resemblance to Adrian, the stone statue of Adrian that was over Irumsol. Five is also going to take a look, like he's going to basically do it like a three sixty turn, and just take the entire interior of the shack in. Investigation to look more finely at certain points or perception to sort of, like, keep sort of assessing what's around you. I just want to note, Rid put the papers in her bag. So that's a 17 plus my perception, which is 24. You look around. To you five, you're looking. And you see all these writings and words, and it's so disturbing. The common books that perhaps one would see on a standard shelf, perhaps at a bookstore in the center of town, on how to better enhance your life. They are juxtaposed with these markings, these tribalistic, animalistic forms of expression. Black splotches throughout, mixing and matching with the red. And you keep looking, and there you see another piece of seven, a shoulder piece, and you see one of his fingers. And now, if you would, for us five, can you describe seven for me? What does he look like? Or better yet, what is the last image that five has of seven in his mind? And if he could please share with the class. Five in this moment, as he sees the shoulder piece and, and the finger, and he's still holding the shin piece, in his mind, their memory flashes of him climbing a mountainside in Berndarium in the mountain ranges that surround the Gnomish Kingdom. And Seven is up, up ahead of him, just gesturing them to come forward. And Seven is wearing this green cloak. As part of Seven's gift, he sort of almost blends in with the surroundings as almost like this active camouflage. And he, he sort of hears Six huffing and puffing behind them as they're all three of them are climbing this mountain together. And as you're sort of picking up all these pieces, you notice from the opening across the shack, a fabric tugged at the piece of wood, that resembling of his green cloak. Five immediately goes in and grabs it. He looks at Rowan and he says, uh, Rowan, we're very close. We're very close. He, he's, he was here. He was here and I don't know what happened, but those look like Adrian's hands. Didn't you say that he was the one speaking to Seven in your visions from the Haven Eye? Yes. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think we need to gather everything we can here and just keep heading east. Aye, let's, let's do that. Five, almost like second-handedly, as Rowan's telling you this, you sort of turn back from where you found the green cloak and you look at the opening and there from the opening you can see outward into what looks like a good couple hundred feet or so jagged rocks protruding from the soil in a almost circular fashion from the opening outward five is gonna head down he gestures at the rest of them and he says, down there, down, we need to go down there. And he's going to begin to try and climb down. Would you like to hold my hands? Don't take the hands, please. I'm not going to take the hands, but could I borrow them really quick, Red? Uh, yeah, sure. But we'll give Zoe the hand. Zoe's going to take the hands and Zoe's going to flip back to a particular page in her book. And she's going to take out the ink and dab some of the fingerprints 
in to see if they'll have any and stamp them on the page. So Zoe's just on the floor, dunking fingers into her tiny little inkwell. It is with the uh, the special ink as well. So Zoe, you take the hand, you dip it in the ink, your special ink, and you put it on your journal. As you do, you try the thumb, smudgy remain, nothing really there. You try the middle finger, you try the ring finger, and eventually you come across essentially the pinky. And you do that whole thing where you like roll it from one side to the other to get a full profile of it. As you do, you watch as the ink on your paper begin to bubble. And as it bubbles, the bubbles itself of the ink burst up and land on other segments of that same page where you have the fingerprints. As the ink lands, you watch as it begins to slither and move. And there it begins to make words. And the ink and other parts begins to make shape in front of you below the fingerprints written in the ink with a picture commander adrian of the arcanum recognized zue what are you doing collecting data but my ink is doing something really weird it's never moved on its own before and now it's making a whole face as you can see zue looks very uncomfortable because she like the one thing she has control over in her life is now suddenly feeling very out of her control. What did you expect it to do? Well, it doesn't move on its own. It just works when I want it to work, and now it's... It does what when you want it to work? It just makes sure that my stories are held in place forever. That's that's all it is. Okay. But now it's making a picture of Adrian, and I don't quite know how to take this. Like, is this Adrian maybe communicating? Is this... Make an intelligence check for me, Zue. It looks like it identifies who Adrian was. It's confirming that it was Adrian, isn't it? Like, you got the right person. These are their fingerprints. That's what it seems like to me. 21. Your book is your book. Your book was gifted to you by the Arcanum. Perhaps... There is something within the pages of this journal that you feel a deep connection to, a deep understanding, but there are perhaps certain magics that have been instilled upon it. The writing that says Commander Adrian of the Arcanum recognized is not your writing. It's not Ilionas's writing. It's just writing. Almost as if it recognizes when a fellow member of the Arcanum is, for lack of better words, present. Zoe is just silent. She is going to pull out her dagger and cut off the tip of the pinky that activated this and put it into her pouch for later. Five. You begin to step out. Your size alone is a little bit hard to maneuver through, but sure enough, you push out from the back. And now that you're here, you see there, on one of the branches more cloth of the cape from Seven dangling there ripped and you look down and on the ground almost in like mud and very humid water what looks like a leg coming out just perfectly coming out from the ground where it looks like Seven might have jumped but when he landed A piece broke and was left behind. And there you see now, as you're looking at it, ground disturbed, almost as if something was dragging itself in a hurried pace from the tree to these clustered jagged rocks that come up at a perfect point towards the center that seem to be making a circle formation roughly about a hundred or so feet away from you. I make my way down, and I head off in that direction. In this moment, Five is kind of moving absent-mindedly, like he is so solely focused on this one thing that he's not fully aware of whether or not people are following him. Five, wait, wait, can you... Can you lend Zue a hand down before we... before we get going? 
Just so she can get down safe. Five doesn't even... He's already halfway down the tree at this point. I mean, if we all want to just jump, I can handle it. Five, you feel it in your chest. You're getting close. And you keep going through. You're now following the... What honestly looks like a trail of just flattened earth where something has just dragged itself. And there, amongst the dirt and the mud, you see what looks like pieces. Small metal pieces of seven. I'm just picking pieces up. The ones that I can carry, I'm just sort of picking them up and and putting them in my pouch. And you keep going. At this point now, I'll say the three of you step outside... Looking at five, just following this trail eastward, you notice around you, you're still in Arborea. However, the entire makeup of the world around you seems darker, more gloom. There is a much different atmosphere in this portion of Arborea to the point where you kind of almost like look at each other And your colors, whatever vibrancy you have to them, they're just null. You almost look like you're in black and white. Where whatever light is piercing through here just completely takes away that vibrancy. And five, from the distance, blooming with life, just looks like a sketch running. A black and white film playing out before you. Five, you continue going. And now as you're getting closer, you begin to notice straight ahead. Now that you can see it better, it looks like there are these rocks that form and protrude out of the ground in different sharp sort of sections. However, what holds in what looks like a almost perfect circle, these rocks that come up to fine points of different shapes and sizes, forming what looks like a circle. And the trail keeps leading through there. Five at this point is continuing on but is sort of like almost in like a a stutter step where each step is is becoming more ponderous with each step he's suddenly remembering all of the different memories of seven all of the good times his first time seeing seven as he was created and he remembers them when they were first discovering their the the validite gifts that they've been granted and he remembers conversations with seven Seven saying things that were completely opposite to what Five believed the Gnome Masters had created them for. Thinking about how, well, we have a purpose here. We have, we have a home here. We need to protect and preserve. And Seven completely disregarding that and saying, no, this is, this is a lie. This is a falsehood that we are living in. And a few days later, Seven being gone. It's at this moment that he just stops at, like, the perimeter of these rocks. Massive. And as you're staring at them, as you mentioned, you also remember those nights by the fire retelling stories of the day, of what gifts you were allowed to bestow upon other people, your gifts, but then sitting always at the edge of Brandarium on a single rock, overlooking the horizon. Seven, who slowly began to show up less and less until eventually he was gone. And then you feel your body lurch forward. You feel your legs pulsing. You feel your body kind of shift as if somebody is tugging you forward. What are the rest of you doing? Zuei's gonna wait for everyone to jump. Falling backward like an escaping thief in an action movie. Rowan, like, almost steps off like he's trying to hover down, just hoping that Zuei's gonna do something, telling him to jump. Zuei's gonna jump after Rowan, and she's gonna take a little feather out of her pocket, kiss it in face, and cast Featherfall. So we just all gently float down. As now you see from the distance, Five begin to walk into this space. That to you, Five, the outside of it is made up of like clusters of trees, so you kind of have to like find your way through, but you eventually disappear from within, and you guys see Five 
step through. Five, as you're stepping through, tree after tree comes up to you. You grab them and you sort of push through. You find your body trying to fit in little tight spaces where you know that if you just keep going, you can see what looks like an opening, a clearing up ahead from beyond the rocks. You can get there, pushing and pushing ahead until eventually you stop at a cluster of trees in front of you. And you can see from behind it sort of the base of these rocks that are now coming outward. And now that you're looking at it from this, from this angle, you can see it's a massive plain clearing with rocks that act like a canopy, untouched piece of nature, grass and dirt all throughout, completely unbothered. Five is going to stop in the, the very back corner of his mind is going to think, I should wait for the others. With his hands at his side, holding tiny pieces of seven that he has picked up off of the ground, he's just going to stand there. Before we go into the big scary void part and leave kind of the hag part, it seems like, Rid's going to reach out one more time with her mind to Olga. Are you there? Make a persuasion check for me, Rid. Oh. It is a 15. You extend out the wind that seems to slowly be picking up in this area. You hear the chains rattling from the cages that are still hoisted above you. The laughter continues. <laughs> the other hags seem to be mocking you. But when you reach out, and all in unison, every single one of the hags, shh, 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 all to one another, shushing. And Zue and, and Rowan, you notice the smoke that is coming from within these cages sort of begins to like ease its movement. And it just becomes a cloud of black smoke. Shh, shh, shh. She's reaching out. She's reaching out. I like this, love this, live for this. All of the different hags begin to talk. As from deep within the voices you hear. Red, is that, is that you? Red, how, how, how long has it, has it been? It feels like ages. Like a day or two. Oh, oh, that's good. That's good. Okay, what the fuck? Are you, are you okay? Um, well, I maybe find myself in a bit of a, uh, how would one say, uh, a situation in which my life is on the line. <laughs> but apart from that, <laughs> I'm doing quite all right. Are you in one of the cages? I wish. What's worse than a cage? Red, d don't, um, don't, don't come this, this way, Red. At this point, this is, uh, it's okay. It was a good run. It was, uh, e educational, one would say. <coughs> you hear, like, what sounds like gurgling of coughing. <coughs> it's quite all right at this point for you to, uh, to carry on. I wish you the best of luck. And, uh, y yes, that, that is all. It is weird that her tone is in this way, the way she's talking, it's, it's, it's very strange. And in that silence, you hear, <sighs> Okay, I am ready now. And then your connection stops. Five, you get there. As all of a sudden from behind you, you hear the rustling of footsteps as your friends catch up to you. Zue, you feel sort of weirded out by a lot of the new sort of introductions to your own personal items that has been happening. Rid, you feel this sort of lost sense of like where Olga could be. Rowan, what are you feeling? Rowan isn't so much focused on himself than he is five at this point. He knows that Five is experiencing some very hard emotions right now. He 
saw him rush out of the tree without anyone else. He is more so just dead focused on him and what he is doing and feeling so he doesn't make a reckless decision or do something he might regret based off of these powerful emotions that are running through him right now. Your good-natured focus on others. Make a wisdom saving throw for me. 18. You feel something, something on the corner of your eye. That you look, and there's nothing there, just more trees. Clusters of dense trees all around. No effect. But you feel something in this space was just trying to invade you. And five, in that moment, you look ahead and protruding from the tall grass, Seven's arm in the center. Um, before we take any, any more steps forward, something is watching us. I felt it, it tried to invade my thoughts. Something's wrong with Olga, as long as we're talking about concerning things. Let's get it all out now while we can. Five points in the distance towards Seven's arm that's just sort of hanging there. I think the Archon can see my notes if we're putting concerns out there. Whoa, okay, Wait, what? great. Um, okay, let's let's go from furthest distance to closest. I don't know, the force seems like more of an immediate thing we deal with. Yeah, I agree. Right. But I feel like Seven's right there. Fuck. Seven is... Seven... He, he he jumped out of the tree and he's been he dragged himself and he's all throughout this forest he must have been running from something if he jumped but what does what does this mean he, we have commander adrian's hands and we have seven's pieces they were both here you knows hag's handwriting in that hut red was going to keep this to herself but she takes out the papers from her bag and she's like Hag handwriting, hag handwriting, says Adrian, chosen, creature, reward, proud. They're all connected for some reason. This isn't coincidence. There's, there's something going on. And if Seven spoke to Five, Seven might be able to speak now, and hopefully he has some insight into why all of this is coming together. In my visions with the Haven Eye, Commander Adrian was beckoning Seven to do something. Perform some kind of, perhaps a ritual. I feel like those creatures that we discovered in, in the wood before we entered into this hag domain, they're a part of this too. They're survivors. And we have hags in cages. What's that about bodies dangling? I don't know if this might be right, but I do, um... And Zoe's flipping back through the pages in her book. You said they said something about a Hades? Yeah. He's the one they follow, right? I thought it was either join them or get taken by him. They said he was gonna get to Olga, I assume, eventually, one way or the other. They said either I come with them and bring six bags of meat which again seems excessive or they'd hurt the townspeople that was the thing I'm just saying maybe if he was you know he's already a threat to you and Olga how do we know he isn't the one that also captured those hags we don't well hopefully we have someone to ask and Rowan will gesture to the held up arm in the middle of the field Five is going to look at his friends. I feel like I'm stating the obvious here, but I feel like we're walking into a trap. Rowan, what about whatever is trying to get inside your head? I couldn't pinpoint where it was coming from. I don't know if it was malicious, but something was trying to delve into there. For what, I don't know. It was off in the forest. I don't know if it's something we worry about now or later. Zue, what do you think? When you say invading Rowan, do you mean it was trying to get, like, in your head? 
or in your body. It's almost like I let my guard down for a second and something tried to take advantage of that. If that's the case, if you're okay with it, Five, I think we should deal with that first because my worry is if we go find Seven and we all feel a little emotional and we end up letting our guards down and this person is following us, it leaves us at risk. The problem is I don't know where it came from. Some of our team, I guess, could be on guard because I think some of us are pretty competent with mind stuff and she kind of gives Rid a small smile. Rid does it. Let's let five go see what might be left of seven and we all just take point. This is his brother. He should deal with the situation and we'll just keep him safe. Five nods to Rowan. Just a show of appreciation says, thank you, Rowan. He's going to turn and head closer towards Seven's arm. You begin to walk. And as you're walking, you're still following the trail that was left by Seven, as seemingly he dragged himself this way. But as you're going, you feel that the ground itself goes down at a slight decline. And you notice that the closer that you get, you now begin to see whatever sort of like lush nature or foliage was around you begins to be burned away the closer and closer you get as now you can see before you a cluster set of similar rocks protruding from the ground and piercing in all different directions starting from the head to the torso to one remaining leg and one arm that has been torn and ripped from its socket that now dangles a couple of feet above. In the ground there, you see the body of Seven, sprawled out with all of these pieces, keeping it about a foot or so off of the ground, and all of these jagged stones piercing its body, almost sustaining it in place. And the ground around him completely cinched. Five is going to run in to Seven's body. He's going to try and cast Healing Word if he sees that Seven is still able. He does not look able whatsoever. Lifeless still. The armor's cold, lifeless. The vines that sort of connect the pieces of Seven have all but dried up. And then you hear... Such a shame. Right from the trees on the opposite side of your friends, you see what looks like a cloaked figure, but it feels as if he was talking to you right next to you. Such a shame indeed. You hear, now next to you, physically, cloak billowing, dark shroud of a towering figure that none of you can see. Would you like me to assist you? I can help. And you watch as he raises his hand and all of Seven's parts, almost like when you take an engine and you just blow it up so you can see all of its inner workings, Seven, all of him becomes pieces, consuming you all around five, like a, like a half globe. And there in the center, like a small crystal pulsing validite and you see now all of its inner connections these thin lines that connect it to the entire essence of the body you see it there you see the connection still thriving and you hear is this what you were looking for it's quite interesting trying desperately to get over the shock of suddenly seeing Seven's body sort of ripped into all these different pieces, sees the, the tiny little tendrils of vines they've connected to the Validite, which is essentially where Seven's soul would be housed. And Five just reaches out and tries to grab the Validite. As you try to go reach out for it, 
the entire body comes back together. And you stand there with your hand out. And the figure says, I can grant you an audience with Seven, if you wish. And now, from the cloak, you just see one pale gray hand. Long fingers, semi-long nails, but beautiful. Almost made out of porcelain itself. The hand comes out of the cloak and places its hand on Seven's head. I'm the only way that you'll find whatever answers you're looking for, but you have to be open to the conversation. Five just wheels on this gloat figure and says, Who are you? The figure gets up. I am the darkness that you hide from. I am the questions you never thought to ask. I am the thoughts that live within your mind that you are too desperate to cast away. I am always and forever your humble servant. So I will ask you again. If you wish to speak to this, what are you prepared to trade? Seven's eye turns on and begins to adjust. And you see it make connection with you and is now looking at you from the one remaining eye that it has functioning. If you wish to simply not speak, then our time here is done. I merely offered my services. And you see as the hooded creature begins to turn in the opposite direction. Five in this moment frantically is is thinking of things that he could offer. His fingers clasp the hilt of the sickle. He takes it from his side and he holds it up to this cloaked figure. I have but this. You watch as the figure stop and turn its head into the black void of the opening that you can't even see a face. It is just eternal darkness. And walks slowly to you. And now stands above you, towering in your height, that then reaches out this pale, beautiful, long hand, places it right above the sickle. Very well. And you watch as he grabs it. But as he's grabbing it, he's not really grabbing it. It's almost like he motions it, and the sickle is floating in the space in his hand, as he is not necessarily touching it, and lifts it up and looks at it. I look forward to getting to know you five. I really do. Tick tock. Time is ticking. In that moment, you hear... As seven, five, 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 what are you doing here? Still stuck to the pieces of stone. You fool! And for today, that's a wrap. God, oh my goodness. Thank you all so much for listening. Catch us in two weeks where we'll see if this trade off works out in the end. And remember, The Arcanum is always watching.